Can we give him a clap of praise? He is so good. So good. So good. Yeah. I can't, uh, I can't guarantee that you could get out of here at 12 because you ain't. But I'd rather experience God like that every day of the week and be late on my agenda. Amen? But I can guarantee that you could get his word. You're in the right place for that. You're going to get the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you're in control. And Father, I pray that I not be seen nor heard, but that you would be seen and heard working through me. God, that you alone would get all of the honor, glory, credit, and praise for you alone or do it. And I pray, God, that every one of us in here, in this ministry, would have a desire that it would be less of us and more of you. So where we're in the way, Father, lovingly remove us and teach us and show us how to follow you. Even in those uncomfortable circumstances, and even in those situations or those temptations that we don't want to give up. Teach us, God, to follow you. Have your way here, Father, as always. May your word be received freely. And may it strengthen every one of us. Teach us by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name and the blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Everyone said, church. Amen. God is good. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, please, to the book of John, chapter 8. John chapter 8, we're going to begin with the 12th verse. And the Word of God says this, praise the Lord. It's holy because it is. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of what church? Life. Listen to this. As a follower of Jesus Christ, the light of Christ should be seen through every one of us every day of our lives. Do you believe that, church? The light of Christ should be seen through every one of us every day of our life. It does not matter what we're going through. It does not matter what we're feeling like. It does not matter where we're at. It does not matter the news we just received. Every one of us should have the light of Christ coming through us every day of our life. Now listen, God shines through you as you faithfully and obediently serve God. Okay, hear that. God shines through you as you faithfully and obediently serve God. And by doing so, God is reaching others through your life. Are you with me so far? God reaches others through your life because obedience to God and righteousness in Christ shines the light of Christ in you and from you. Amen? And so we have to get that down before we go any further in the Word this morning. So look at someone near you and say, God wants to work through you. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. Don't just be mundane about it. You need to get excited about it. So look at the other neighbor that likes to be excited and say, God wants to work through you. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. Look at someone behind you and say, God wants to work through you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Listen, listen, listen. Let me, let me tell you this. So many people, so many people come to church and, and, and they just receive the word and they, if the word is even given and then they leave church and they've done a routine. They don't realize that God wants to use them at the church. They don't realize that God wants to use them when they leave the church. 
They don't realize that God wants to use them in their home that they're going back to. They don't realize that God wants to use them at the workplace on Monday morning and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And that God wants to use them on Friday night and on Saturday morning and Saturday and Saturday evening and Saturday night. And then praise God the first day of the week, Sunday starts all over and we get to come up in here and get used again by God. Amen. See, so many... So many Christians just live this mundane life because they don't understand that God desires to use every one of you. Doesn't matter where you come from, how bad you've been, how dirty you are. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ on the cross so that every one of us could be forgiven of our sins. He died and defeated death on the cross. He rose. Amen. Do you agree that? Do you agree with that? See, before we can even get going into the rest of the scripture this morning, we have to understand that God wants to use us and not only understand that God wants to use us, but it is with great joy that he wants to use us. Because nobody knows me the way I know me. And I'm so thankful that God still wants to use me. And so I get joy out of that. I get joy even though I'm not perfect. And I get joy when I, uh, even though I fall short. I, I get joy knowing that God still wants to use me. And so every one of us, every one of us, when we leave this building today, I want you to be strengthened and encouraged in the Word of God, knowing that you're going to be used. Jot this down if you're taking notes in Matthew chapter 5 in the 16th verse. Put that on the wall, please, gentlemen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus Christ says this. He says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now everyone look at that scripture. Because we got, we got to get this. We got to get this. Jesus speaking in Matthew 5, 16. Jesus says, in the same way, let your light shine before who, church? Others. In the same way, let your light shine before others. That means this. People ought to be seeing Jesus in you. And he shouldn't be hidden in the corner for just Sundays. Everybody with me? He shouldn't be hidden in the corner for just on Sundays. People ought to be seeing Jesus in us every day of the week. And there's a reason, okay? Look at it. There's a reason. In the same way, let your light shine before others, Matthew 5, 16. It goes on to say, Jesus says, so that they may do what? See. See. Now, every one of you should be seen this week. Some of you don't like being seen. Listen, that don't matter. You've got to pray that the strength of God would get you through that because you were created to be seen. You were created to be used for the glory of God. You were created so that God could glorify Jesus Christ through your life. That's what Scripture says. You were created for that. Now, here's the key because I don't need anyone being all legalistic thinking, oh, no, I shouldn't go boast my works before people. No, that's not what it says. If we boast at all, Scripture says we can boast in who? Christ. But let's see what the verse actually says. Look at it again. Matthew 5, 16. Here we go. In the same way, let your light, let your light shine before others so that, here we go, they may see your good works and give glory to who? Self? No, no, no. Your Father. Not self, right? So, so this is why we let the light of Christ shine through us so that people will see the power, the glory, the wonders, the magnificence of God working in us. And when God gets the glory, he uses you to bring others into him. Into him. Most everybody in this room, most everybody in this room was probably brought to Christ, led to Christ by a life that they looked at and saw the light of Christ in. Most often, you're not just sitting there in the open air by yourself and have a wild hair thought that says, hey, I think I want to receive Jesus today just because it's 90 degrees, the sun's shining, and the birds are singing. Most everybody has been affected by the light of Christ that has come to Christ in some way, form, fashion, or another. And as Christians, we have to understand that God's light, the light of Christ, wants to shine through you so that others cannot see you, but they can see Christ working in you. Okay, now listen to this. This world, and I truly believe this, this world is trying to shame the gospel message. Would you believe that? This world is trying to shame the gospel message. They are trying to silence the Christian faith 
through shame and through guilt just because we are called to a higher standard of obedience and righteousness through the Word of God that they choose not to follow. But do not be ashamed, church. You hear that? You've got nothing to be ashamed about. You have nothing to be silenced about. You have no reason to be quiet. Do not be ashamed. Do not snuff out the light. Do not put it under the bed. Do not hide it under the table or the countertop. Do not be ashamed, church. Never be ashamed for following the will and the call of God to walk in righteousness every day of your life. There's never a reason to put the light of Christ out so others cannot see it in you. There's never a reason. Every one of us, every one of us should take joy in the fact when we wake up and leave today that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It charges me. There was a few fellas in the sound room, two or three of them in the sound room just before worship. And I could just feel the Spirit of God. Matter of fact, in my office this morning as I was approaching the Lord uh, on, 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 on the sermon this morning and just saying, God, put this however you want it. Speak to me, Father, through your Scripture. What do you want me to have for myself and to also have for the church here uh, through your Scripture? And he began to just show me what he wanted me to, to preach on and the order he wanted me to preach it. And throughout for the next three hours, it was everything I could do to just fight back tears so that I could see what I was doing. And so when I came into the, into the worship room, in the, sound, in the sound room, when I went to the sound room to get, to get ready and mic'd up and we're getting ready to come out and everything, I looked at the guys and, and I said, oh my goodness, I feel like a fighter in a prize fight. Just, just, you ever see them? I'm not a fan of boxing, uh, but, but, but you, you ever see them? Just, they get pumped up. They get, they get pumped up. I remember when I, when I played football, we take our helmets and we crash into each other. We bang shoulder pads because we, we were just getting each other warmed up, man. We were, we were getting ready. Every good athlete, they start to get a stretch on, right? They start to stretch because they don't want to pull or tweak or twins or tear or rip something. I, was, it was, I could just feel it. I've, I've been getting stretched out, been getting warmed up, and I knew, I just knew that God was going to do something. And I looked at the guys in the sound room, and I said, oh, my gosh, I feel like a fighter in a prize fight, man, and we're getting ready to knock the devil's slam in the mouth. I take, I take joy. I take joy when I leave my house thinking, I don't know what God's going to do. I know I've got a plan to go to Food Lion today, but somebody might get saved in the bread aisle, praise God. I mean, I don't know what God's going to do. But I'm not ashamed. Not ashamed. When we get to that place of, of not being ashamed, the light always shines. The light always shines. Do you know that Satan, Jesus himself said, Satan came to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. Satan wants your light to be hidden. You know that? Satan wants your light snuffed out. Satan, Satan doesn't want your family seeing your light. He doesn't want your spouse experiencing the light. He doesn't want your grandchildren, grandfathers and grandmothers. He doesn't want your grandchildren seeing godly morals and values and principles inside of you. Uh, Satan doesn't want you speaking scripture over your children. Satan doesn't want you praying scripture over your grandchildren. Do you understand that? Satan wants to put out your light. And I say this, if Satan wants something, I want to go against it. So if Satan wants to destroy it, if Satan wants to steal it, if Satan wants to kill it and snuff it out, I say, God, flame it up. We, we should not be a ashamed. Listen, we're in the world. We're not of the world. So if the world wants to shame the gospel, then we better go against that and do the opposite. Something something incredible, this topic of I'm not ashamed. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're there, I want you to take, I want you to take joy because this might be a testimony, but, but maybe, maybe you're there with me, praise God, and we can relish in this moment together, but, but if, 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 if you've got that flame in you and, 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 and just for an encouragement to someone else, would you just look at someone near you and say, I'm not ashamed? I mean, people need to, other Christians need to know I mean, hear this. This is serious. This is serious. Other Christians need to know that there's Christians near them that's not ashamed. Other Christians need to know that there's soldiers that are willing to stand up and fight for the righteousness of the word of the truth that needs to be proclaimed and professed. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Other Christians need to know that they're not alone anymore when they come into the family of God. 
Other Christians need to see the testimony and the work and the light of Christ in you. There may be some people that sit near you every week in this church and they just need someone to tell them, I'm not ashamed and you ain't got to be either. I'm not ashamed of this. Many of you were probably never raised in church. Raise your hand if you were never raised in church. Look at that. Keep them up for a minute. I, I'm not saying that y'all went on the weekends when it was holidays. Raised in church. Raise your hand if you was never raised. Took there, drugged there, forced there. I'm talking about raised there. That's, that's at least half, hands down. I'm right there with you. I wasn't raised in church either. But I'm telling you, what I've gotten, what I've tasted, and what I've seen is so good that I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. And if, and even if proclaiming it took me to my death, then I say bring it on because then comes life. Then comes life. Let me show you something in, in Scripture concerning this. Let's go there together, please. Uh, John 8, 12. If you want to flip there quickly, you're more than welcome to. Let's go ahead and put it on the screen. John 8, 12. Jesus tells us that whoever follows him uh, will, will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of what, church? Life. Okay, many of you should probably still be there if you didn't flip to Matthew 5, 16. Jesus tells us that whoever follows him will not walk in darkness, but will have, everybody say will, okay, because that's a guarantee, will have the light of life. Now listen, church, we have to be to this point. You have to be to the point where you can say boldly and proclaim loudly, I'm in the light. I choose to be in the light. I'm not perfect, but I choose to walk in the light. And God, whatever you want to do through me and in me, have your way so that your son Jesus Christ is glorified through me so that that light is seen to the unsaved, so that the unsaved might be saved. And what that means is this church, Father, it's, listen, it's a prayer like this. Father, it's, it's, it's your passion inside of me. I want your desire in me. May my heart cry be your heart cry. God, may I not be seen, but may you be seen. Father, may I not be heard, but may, may, may you be heard, God. Someone called me this week, bless my socks off. They, they shared with me that they, they uh, had stopped at a Wawa to get some gas, and as they were leaving, the Lord had directed them to stop at the next Wawa just a few miles up the street. So they pull into the Wawa a few miles up the street. They're at the coffee station getting some coffee because they figured, well, maybe I'll go in there and just get some coffee. As they're getting some coffee, it was a retired individual, and uh, she started to share her story. She said, I'm retired, but I'm going back in as a substitute teacher, and I'm pretty nervous about that. So the individual got uh, prayer going. They lay hands on this individual and start praying. And, and praise God from what the, what the gentleman told me is, is that the entire Wawa just stopped and everybody came over, lay hands, and start praying on this woman right there at the coffee bar at Wawa. The, the lady behind the cash register broke protocol. She got out from behind the register. She went all the way to the back of the store and started praying too. The store manager, store manager didn't get upset. Store manager went back here and started praying too. See, Christians, listen, church, we're so scared about what the unchurched is going to say that we don't even know who's in the church. In Wawa, and you got 10 or more people that are church, that are willing to link up and pray, but unless someone acts like the church, no one knows the church is even beside you. Where's the light? Ah, Satan has done a fantastic job at making the church be ashamed of the light. It might hurt somebody's feelings. Oh, no. He's got denominations fearful of lawsuits just for hurting feelings. Recently, the NFL sit, sent a letter to Texas. Now, the NFL, not the government, not the legislature, the National Football League sent a letter to the state of Texas that said, we don't want you messing with this bathroom bill. You better stay out of it or we'll pull, we'll pull some games up out of there. The in, what do they have to do with anything? Money. Satan is trying to silence 
and to a very large degree has done a fantastic and incredible, sadly incredible job at silencing the light of the church. But you know where he's missed it? He can't handle the people that understand the power of God that lives in them. He can't handle that. He can't handle people that knows uh, even though darkness is in this world, my God has overcome darkness. That's what Scripture says in Ephesians. My God has overcome darkness. And when, when Satan gets up onto some folks that actually are proud to say, I'm the church, he knows he ain't got a fighting chance. So, so when, you, when you see them bobbing and weaving in the sound room next Sunday, <laughs> if I boast, I boast in the Lord. In the Lord. Great things God is doing when people get saved before the sermon even starts. That's all the Lord. And Satan knows that he's not welcome here. He got punched. Elbow, head butted, kneecap, kicked on out. But you know when that all started? It didn't start today. It started in the very beginning in a prayer life that says, use us, Lord. It starts for the people that pray over this church every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock right here in this aisle. There's a circle that gets from right here all the way to the doors out right there. And the big old circle, well, it's an oval now. started out with just four or five, and now it's an oval in this whole place. And, and we just start praying, and we're believing that God's going to do incredible things. And we've just been honored enough to be here to see it this morning, church. We can't be ashamed of the gospel and what God is doing. Turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 1 for me. Not the gospel of John. Go to 1 John. It's towards the back. Head back there towards Revelation. First John, chapter 1. We're going to begin with the fifth, fifth verse. First John 1, 5. Oh, I love to hear those pages turning. We're growing, aren't we? We're growing. 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is what? Now you got to remember that because we're getting ready to go to some more scripture where you're going to need that knowledge. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from how much sin, church? See, that's my God. I'm not ashamed of that. He cleanses us from all sin. It don't matter what you've done or who you are. I'm telling you that the blood of Jesus cleanses you from everything you got going on that ain't good. Verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Look at verse 7, please, church. Verse 7 says we're to walk in the light as God is in the light. Verse 5 says, look at verse 5. Verse 5 says that God is light, okay? God is light. If you're taking notes, you've got to write this down. I pray this stick with you in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says this. Do you not know that you are God's temple, that God's spirit dwells in you? Now listen to that. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Now listen, church. Since God is light, we just read that in 1 John 1, 5, 5. Since God is light, and we just read in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, that his spirit dwells within us because we're followers of Jesus Christ, then that means you got a light shining all up on the inside of you that everybody near you, around you, and that can see and hear you needs to see and hear. 
God is light. And when you receive him as your savior, your body becomes the temple of his Holy Spirit. And then you've got light up on the inside of you from that time forward. And you want to know what causes that light to be radiant? Want to know what causes that light to exhilarate? You want to know what causes that light to be a passion and to flame from your life? It's two words. It's faithfulness and obedience. And the more you're faithful to follow God and the more obedient you are to his call, the more the light of Christ comes from your being. It comes from your life. It comes from your testimony. It comes from your ministry. And every one of you, if you're here today and you think you don't have a ministry, let me prove you wrong. Once you're saved, your life is your ministry. You've got children. They're in your ministry. You've got grandchildren. They're in your ministry. You go to your job. That's your ministry. You go into Food Lion. That's your mission field. You've got ministry all over the place. How many of you believe that if you're not dead yet, God still wants to use you? Do you really believe that? Well, I don't know. I'm old and my back hurts and most of my friends are dead. I just go up to the store and have a little biscuit every morning and drink my coffee at McDonald's. And That's your ministry, praise God. That's exciting. That's your ministry. I love to sit down and hear someone older than me in the faith talk to me about faith. They're tried. They're true. They're tested. Tell me what you've been through. Don't tell me what you want to go through. Tell me what you've been through. Let me glean. Let me feed. Let me learn from you. Every one of you in here have a ministry. Every one of you in here has a ministry. And the Spirit of God, God is light. And since he lives in us, then every one of us have the light going. Look, look at Luke chapter 11. Please. Luke. Chapter 11, verse 33. God is so good to us, amen? Luke chapter 11, verse 33. We're going to read for a little bit. Luke eleven thirty three. the word of God says this, praise the Lord. No one after lighting a lamp puts it in a cellar or under a basket but on a what, church? On a stand. So that those who enter may what? All right, now look, I'm going to say this and try not to make it sound uh, to what someone thinks is sinful. So just receive this in love and truth. Because this is what Scripture says. We pulled it out here. We pulled it out in Matthew, the fifth chapter. You should be seen, church. You should be seen. I'm not talking about in fleshly, worldly ways. I'm not talking about showing off with what you got. You should be seen in this way. The power of God working through you. The ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ should be seen working through you. Loving people the way Jesus loved people should be seen working through you. Forgiving people the way Jesus chose to forgive you should be seen working through you. Blessing people that need to be blessed should be seen working through you. Giving to those that do not have should be seen. Jesus should be seen working through you. And even when you don't know what to do in your life of ministry, you should just be able to say, God, use me. Shine through me. And he will. And before you know it, you're standing at a coffee bar in the Wawa Man, I wish I'd have been there. That's my kind of stuff right there, man. I missed it. <sighs> Love stuff like that. Do you know that when you submit to the Father and you let the light of Christ shine through you, you don't have to find those types of events. They just find you. <laughs> Did you hear that? See, don't, don't miss what God's doing because you're trying to find what God's doing. Everybody get that? Don't miss what God's doing because you're trying to find what God's doing. Just be submissive to the Father and he'll take you to where he's doing it. Yes, somebody in the back said it. We call that a divine appointment. Best ones to have. Absolutely best ones to have. 
Luke chapter 11. Let's go to verse 34. Your eye is the lamp of your body. And when your eye is healthy, listen to this, church, because I felt heavy on this. I really felt the Spirit heavily on this topic when he was giving me the Scripture. Your eye is the lamp of your body, and when your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of what? Light. But when your eye, when it is bad, your body is full of what? Darkness. Now, it's talking to the church here. Verse 35, therefore be careful, lest the light in you be darkness, if then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. Now listen to this. This passage warns us, church, that what we allow ourselves to focus on with our physical eye and even think about and see in our mind to look at, what we allow to be seen could cause darkness in us. We, we set ourselves up when we look or stare at temptation physically or when we look and stare at temptation mentally. It puts the thoughts of sin and the action of it into your head and you must understand that Satan is trying to gain control over you in that very moment by tempting your flesh, but don't look, don't give in. We must choose not to be tempted in the moment. We have to train ourselves that when we see ourselves looking into darkness rather than walking in light, we've got to train ourselves to obediently do a 180 and get away from that. That's how you become mature in the faith. If you want the new creature, you've got to continue to choose to live in the new creature. Psalms 119, verse 130. Jot that down if you're taking notes. The 119th Psalm, the 130 verse. We're told that the unfolding of God's Word gives light. The unfolding of God's Word gives light. Is it on the board yet? The unfolding of God's Word gives light. Everybody say that. The unfolding of God's Word gives light. The unfolding of God's Word gives light. Let's say it. The unfolding of God's Word gives light. Say it again. The unfolding of God's Word gives light. You, know, you can't go wrong given Scripture. Say it again. The unfolding of God's Word gives light. You want more light coming out of you, then get more word up inside of you. You may say, but pastor, I'm already praying. I'm already reading. Then I say, read more. Yeah, but you told me that before, so I did read more. Well, read more than that. Well, where do I stop? You don't. You just keep reading. Every time you want more, you go get more. You should read so much. Listen to this. You should read so much that your very speech with people now is affected by the Word of God. Rather than giving man's knowledge, man's opinions, man's wisdom, you should read so much that when you give advice to somebody, it's God's advice. It's God's Word. It's the Lord's Scripture. It should flow out of you like your water hose when you turn it on at the house and it travels through the hose, coming out the end, having an effect on everything and everyone that it hits. When you, when you get so much word in you, the word of God says, what comes in a man comes back out. But I don't see light coming out of me. I just don't understand. You got to get it in there. You've got to focus the unfolding of the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 130. The unfolding of the word of God brings light. You want light on the situation in your life? See what God's Word has to say about it. You want light in the situation that you're going through, church? See what the Word of God has to say about it. You see, you can never have enough of the Word. Do you believe that? Raise your hand if you believe that. You can never have enough of the Word. You can never have enough of the Word of God in your life. You should get it in you so much that you begin to use the Scripture in your conversations, in your speech. Go to Ephesians chapter 5 quickly, please, church. Ephesians chapter 5, just before the book of Philippians. Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to look, we're going to read for a little bit. Uh, that's why you're here, amen? We're going we're gonna to look at the sixth verse, Ephesians 5, 6, and, and this is what the Word of God says. It says, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Ephesians 5, verse 7. Therefore, do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light in the world. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been there before. 
Every one of us, every one of us that's saved has been in the darkness. But look, here's the new creature. Now we're the light in who? The Lord. Walk as children of the light. Ooh, did you see that in Scripture? Don't get mad at me. I just read it. We're to walk as children in the what? That means wherever you walk, not just when no one's looking at you walk. Amen? All right, let's see what it says. It's the Word of God. It's not wrong. It's always accurate. Walk as children of light, verse 9, for the fruit of light. Hear this now. The, the, the light has fruit. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Hey, you want to know how to always stay in light since it says the fruit of it is always true? You want to know how to stay in the, uh, in the light of Christ? Stay out of self. Everybody get that? Because when you get all selfie-fied, it gets sloppy-fied. That's a t-shirt. When you get selfie-fied, you get sloppy-fied, don't we? Because when I start feeling selfish, I start getting nasty. And it doesn't just affect me mentally, it affects me physically. Do you know what I'm talking about? That you, you just so much want what you want that it ruins everything. Wives, how many of you know when your husband's in a selfie mood because of how he treats your children? Anyone? Where yet? Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Two of them over there. Three. My wife raised her hand. I was waiting on that one. My wife, I'm telling you I'm not perfect. My wife can tell how my day is going by, at times, how I treat our children. Sometimes she'll have to come up. Now, most of y'all wives are too scared to raise your hand. You know you're lying in church, and that's horrible. <laughs> but not responding is not a lie, Pastor. I just chose not to vote. <laughs> I have to be neutral because I go home with him. So we've made a deal that if I don't raise my hand on him, he doesn't raise his hand on me. Just to just <laughs> There's been times my wife will come up to me and she'll say, Lee, just notice how you're acting to the boys. And as much as I love you, and you are the man that I married, you're the man that I'll die with. What is your problem, man? No, I'm just playing. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I digress. <laughs> for the, look at verse 9 for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord do you realize how much better off Christians would be if they tried to discern what's pleasing to God and not pleasing to self see it's the selfie atmosphere that gets us in trouble now, now, now watch what happens verse 11 take no part tell your neighbor don't do it yeah, yeah. T take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead do what expose them. You know what exposes them? It's the light. Look at verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret, but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible, for anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will do what on you? Oh. He shines in you, and he shines on you, according to the word of God. He shines in you, and he shines on you according to the word of God. Look at verse 15. Look carefully then how you walk. Everybody, remember we're to walk as children in the what? Okay, remember earlier we read that? We're to walk as children in the light. Now look at how God's tying it together here in Ephesians 5.15. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best of the use of time because the days are what, church? Evil, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the what of God? Spirit of God, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting, watch this, submitting to who? One another, out of reverence for who? See, it's hard to submit to one another when we're in flesh, but when you submit out of reverence for Christ, it becomes easy. When we submit out of reverence for Christ, it becomes easy. We need to get to the point, church. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, you used, Ephesians 5, 8, you used to be darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Everybody look up here for just a moment. You need to hear this. 
And this is for me as well. This is for me as well. You must know who you are. In Christ, you must know who you are. Every one of us in Christ must know who we are. Verse 8 goes on to say, walk as children of light. That's who you are. You're in Christ. That's who you are. The Spirit of God lives in you if you're saved and a follower of Jesus Christ. That's who you are. You must know who you are so when you go to do battle with the enemy's camp, you know you've got nothing to fear. You've got nothing to be concerned over. You've got nothing to worry about. It's who you are. It's just who you are. That's when true victory sets into your life, when you know who you are. Jot this down if you're taking notes. 1 John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. 1 John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 says this. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In him was life. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not what? overcome it. The darkness has not overcome it. And that's good news for every one of you that have the light of Christ in your life. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're fighting or battling, no matter what is tempting you, the darkness has not overcome the light. God is light. His spirit dwells inside of you, which means God's not losing a battle just because he's inside of your life. God was victorious before you, God will be victorious with you, and when you go into heaven, God will still be victorious without you down here on this earth. Think about that. Go to Matthew chapter 5. I've got a couple more things that I want to show you, and then we're going we're gonna to close up. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 13. Matthew 5, 13, please, church. And this is what the Word of God says. You are the salt of the earth, church. You're the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Verse 14, church. You are the light of the world. That's you, church. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is where, church? In heaven. Look at verse 14 again. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to who? Oh. Tell your neighbor, you can't choose who gets it. Well, I don't want to witness to him because he's different. What does that matter? That's why you should witness to him. Hmm. Verse 15, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before who? Ah, you got to get this. You're supposed to let Christ be seen in your life shine before others. Did you just read that in that verse? That the light of Christ should shine in you before others? The will of God should be seen in your life. The word of truth should be seen coming from your life. The power and the anointing from the Spirit of God should be seen in your life. Your testimony should be vocal. There should be no shame. But we boast in Christ. It should be seen. Tell somebody near you, don't hide the light. Oh, that was pitiful. Oh, that was pitiful. It sounded like a bunch of light hiders that didn't want to tell someone else not to hide it if they hide it. Don't hide the light. He's just, he's preaching right at me, isn't he? He's preaching right at me. I know I was supposed to talk to somebody about Jesus, and he challenged us last week to bring somebody in here, and I feel like he's staring right at me because I didn't, and where is my light? Oh, why does that young fellow always judge me? I'm not judging you. Listen, I'm trying to encourage you, man. Look at somebody and say, don't hide the light. Yeah, yeah, the, I mean, you don't want to hide that. It's, it's too good. It's, it's too good to hide. It's, it's too good. I mean, you, 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 you go and you take your vehicle and you pay your $5 for a car wash and then you drive out of the parking lot with pride because everybody sees that, that thing shining. 
You've restored it back somewhat to the original care and beauty of the car. Do you know that when Christ restores you by the power of his Holy Spirit, it's supposed to look new. It's supposed to be fresh. It's supposed to be different. And he does it so that others that need to be new, fresh, and different can see Christ in you and say, I want that! I want that. And that's why he does it. Let me take you somewhere else quickly. And we're going we're gonna to wrap up with some prayer. Matthew chapter 9. Go there quickly, please, church. Matthew chapter 9. We're going to begin with the 35th verse. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And there, there, do you know that the New Testament is packed full of Scripture on the light of Christ dwelling in you? I mean, we're just scratching the surface on this topic. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. The Word of God, holy and true, praise the Lord Almighty. It says this, church. Praise God. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Let me tell you something. If you feel lost this morning, you've got a shepherd that wants you to come into salvation. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he doesn't want you to be alone. And, 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 and it goes on incredibly. It goes on to say this. Verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are what? Few. Look at your neighbor and say, You're a laborer. You're a laborer. You're a laborer. And, and, and Jesus says, there's a whole lot going on. The, the harvest is ripe. It's ready. The harvest is plentiful. But the labors are few. And look at verse 38. Because here's where Satan trembles and here's where Satan gets scared. When you get a praying body of believers, when you get a praying church, verse 38, Jesus says, therefore do what? Pray. Therefore pray earnestly. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out who? Laborers into his harvest. Look at someone near you and say, you're a laborer. Tell somebody else, you're a laborer. I mean, this, this just excites me. It excites me because, sure, we, we see the news and it looks horrendous, the shape of this world. But according to the word of God, which is truth, which is truth, that the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. And even though Jesus says the laborers are few, Jesus do just doesn't leave it at the few laborers. Jesus says, pray what? Earnestly for more laborers, which means the church must wake up. The church must be built up. The church must rise up. The church must strengthen up. The church must grow up. And when they grow and mature in Christ, the laborers become many because the harvest is great and the good news the good news for everybody in this room is you're expected to go out and work the harvest because you're a laborer in Christ no one no one is free of the gospel in this room no one you're a laborer if you received salvation today then today you became a laborer if you received salvation 50 years ago, you're a laborer. If you're here today and you've not received Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. If you receive him today, you'll be a laborer for his kingdom and his glory. Somebody, somebody's got to start to preach the gospel in and around your homes. Somebody's got to start to preach the gospel in your workplaces. Somebody's got to start to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross in and near and around you so that it becomes normal when you walk into a Wawa and people know you by your faith being put into action not your faith being hidden in the closet the light of the church has the potential the light of the church has the potential to be so overwhelming to this dark world that it could, if the world chose it, could break out into an entirety of revival just like that. 
You're sitting here and say, Pastor, have you read Revelation? That'll never happen. Revelation was written and inspired by the hand of God. Do you believe that? God's Word. Listen. Hear this right. God's Word will not be limited in the power thereof. If God sees a repentive heart, and God sees a repentive nation, and God sees a repentive land, and God sees a repentive church, revival. God sees his people hungry after his spirit, revival. God sees his, pe his people wanting to grow in his word, revival. God sees his people longing for the spiritual gifts that he has for them, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. It, it, it just it just comes down. It just comes down to being able to, to take the unfolding of the word. Psalms 119, verse 130. The unfolding of the word brings what, church? Life. The unfolding of the word brings life. And what it is, what it is, is this. Let me get let me get let me get the men down here that I talked to earlier. Just 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 the three three men that I talked to earlier. I tell you, Mike, come up here. Bring your candle, Mike. Give me, you be the fourth one. What it, what it is, all it takes is just one. Turn the lights out for me back here. Please, all of them. See, all, all, it, all it takes in a dark place is one light. Do you believe that? You believe that? All, all it takes is all it takes is one light, and if, and if we're willing to take that one light, Scripture says that light shone in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, right? Because the light has overcome the darkness. Do you believe that, church? And so, y'all come on around here, guys. So, so what happens is when you get to your workplace or you get to your family and you allow your light to be seen, one turns into multiple and then as, as, as the Lord used my life to have an effect on their lives, they go out and have an effect on some folks. Go ahead. Choose a side. Choose a side. Choose a side. Choose a side. See, the harvest. The harvest. The harvest is ready. Do you believe that, church? Do you believe the harvest is ready? Do you believe that, do you believe that the, the harvest is plentiful? As, as your candle gets lit, turn around light somebody else's. Light somebody else's and tell them. Tell them the harvest. Tell them the harvest is ready as you light a candle. Tell someone the harvest is ready. Tell someone the harvest is ready. 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 And the laborers, according to this day in this ministry, the laborers are no longer few. The laborers are no longer few. The laborers are no longer few. Hear that, church. Hear that, church. The laborers are no longer few. The harvest is ready. You've got family that needs salvation. You've got bosses that need salvation. You've got loved ones that need salvation. You've got people in and near and around your life that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't come just to die for you, but he came so that none should perish. So that none should perish. Not just for this church. He came so that none should perish. He came so that no one in this county could perish. He came so that no one in this state should perish. He came so that no one in this political realm should perish. Even the people that we don't like you better start loving them because he came so that they should not perish as well. And you, you, you may be just the one that God wants to shine his light through to pierce through some darkness, to pierce through darkness. The harvest is ready and it is plentiful and it is up to you, not just me, not just the spiritual board. Not just preachers, not just teachers, not just classroom helpers, not just nursery workers, not just associate pastors, but it is up to you, church. Every one of you are a laborer. 
for the kingdom of God. Every one of you are a worker in his hand. Every one of you have been prayed for today that you would understand that you're a laborer. I'm a laborer. We're all servants. Bond servants of Jesus Christ. And when you study that, when you study that in the Greek language, it doesn't say servant anymore. It says slave. And we're a slave to Jesus Christ. And oh, how he's worthy of it. Because he let them, he let them put him on the cross for every one of you. And because of it, your sins today can be forgiven. If you're willing to receive this word in love from the Lord, and you're you're willing to be a laborer for the harvest that is plentiful. Why don't you take your candle, just hold it up high, hold it up high, hold it up high, hold it up high. See, look around you for a minute, church. Just take a minute and look around you. That all started from one flame. That all started from one flame. That all started with one flame. Imagine if every one of those flames hit 10 more. The impact for the kingdom that you'd have. The impact for the gospel. The souls that would be saved and led into salvation through Christ Jesus. If you're here today, bring your candles low. Bring your candles low for a moment. If you're here today and and you've not yet given your soul to the Lord, and you've heard this word about being a light, and you want to be that, would you just raise your hand if you're ready to receive Jesus as King? And if somebody's around you and I miss them, raise your hand so that I can see you standing near them. Are you here today and you want to receive salvation? I, I don't want to miss anybody else. Anybody else in here that's not saved, that's ready to be saved? See, the truth of the matter is, in a room this size right now with all you folks, Someone in here still needs to be saved. Don't leave here without that. Don't leave here without it. If you've got a desire, if you've got a desire, to hit that harvest field today and not put it off. We're gonna close in prayer right now, but in closing, would you would you hold your, your flame up if you've got a desire to start today? Father, use us for your glory. In the precious name and the blood of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, use us for your glory. God, may we not be seen, may we not be heard, but may it be you. May it be your works, may it be your power, may it be your might, may it be your glory that is seen through us, Father, so that we can get no credit, but that all attention would be focused on you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us and protect us May we have health from your hands, favor and honor. As your word says in 1 Samuel 2.30, for those who honor you, you will honor in return. May we receive that today as we've given it to you, God. May we experience your anointing and your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said together, church, amen, amen, and amen. How many of you know that God is good? Amen. How many of you know that from this day forward, you choose not to be ashamed of the gospel? Amen. How many of you know from this day forward, you're willing to be an open vessel for Almighty God? Amen. How many of you know that you're willing to change where God says change, move where God says move, do what God says do, go where God says go, and stop where God says stop? How many of you know that? Pivotal. Pivotal. Without them, we're nothing. But with them, we can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens us. God bless you. We love you. Please, as you 
blow your candles out? Because somebody, I had some bowls under here. Somebody's taking them. I guess they figured they got left out. I had a purpose for those bowls. All is well. All is well. Was that my wife that got those? She's scrambling, so I figured it was her. She's such a cleaner, man. You should see our house. When I set a glass of water down and go to another room and I come back in there, it's gone. And it's that water. And I said, baby, we've been married 13 years. You keep taking my water cup down. She said, well, it was, it was on the counter. Get another one. I said, but that means we got to wash the other one. She means, well, I love her to pieces. What we're, what we're going to do is we're going to blow the candles out. But your, your, your flame on the inside does not go out. And as you leave through these doors, make sure you deposit them in the bowls that we'll have some ushers out there that you can put those back in, all right, so that we can use them on another occasion. We love you all. God bless you. If you're staying for the junior youth and the youth group Toby Mac concert information, it's going to be right here in the next 10 minutes, okay? Toby Mac concert, junior youth, youth group, right here in the next 10 minutes. God bless you.